guys, welcome back to another episode of the same ship, different day. Today I'm not actually looking to talk to you about what's going on on this ship, on the Coral Princess. I'm going to throw it back to uh, Manila, what we were discussing uh, last week uh, regarding all the ships over there. There has been a new um, factor in the whole scenario over there. I'm sure you're aware there's a typhoon that's been going through the Philippines at the moment and going through the area of Manila Bay. Obviously this can be a concern for cruise ships especially as they're especially susceptible to strong winds due to their large size and superstructure and windage area. Lots of ships are anchor there as well, which is a concern, you know, obviously more things to hit and um, being very close like that can cause drama. Also, of course, you've got to think that if you do have to leave in, a, in an emergency, you're quite confined to that area and lots of ships moving around at the same time. Now, before I begin and go further into details, I've got to, of course, say that uh, my opinions and views do not affect those of Princess Cruises or the company or corporation that I work for. Um, just going to be giving you some more information on what's going on, really, and what I've seen. Once again, thank you for all everyone who tuned in to watch the live stream uh, the other day. That was quite successful, actually. I thought it went well. Sorry about the echo. You know, no one can be perfect on the first time. Some small production issues, but something hopefully you didn't feel affected the content of uh, the live stream too much. Now ships at anchor usually can take winds of probably up to 50, 60 knots um, if they have their engines available and thrusters. Usually anything above 35 or 40 knots we will start uh, taking our thrusters online in order to keep the, the ship bow to wind um, and try to reduce the effect of the windage on the ship's side. Obviously all of these factors are very variable depending on conditions and the holding ground that you have and how many shackles of anchor you have paid out etc etc, size of ship, windage area. So I can't be too specific about those kind of details but that's generally some kind of guidance from the experience that I've had over the last uh, eight years or so working at sea. Before I go on to the footage that I want to show you uh, in a second which I did record about 12 hours ago, about half past four this morning. So please do forgive me if I sound a little bit groggy and a little bit tired uh, during that bit, but uh, obviously I wanted to get as much live and up-to-date footage of the most uh, important time of the uh, typhoon and of the weather down there. So then that was sort of seemed to fit in quite well with what was going on. I'm going to be discussing various different terms, TRS, which means Tropical Revolving Storm, and that's essentially what a hurricane or a typhoon is, um, but you know you have different local names for them depending on where they are in the world. Obviously in America mainly they're known as hurricanes and in the States as well you have this Saffir Simpson uh, scale of hurricanes from category 1 through to 5. Uh, so I'll be mentioning that a bit in with talking about the typhoon but it's, it's essentially the same thing. It's all to do with wind speeds and uh, they're both tropical revolving storms so you will hear me mention different technical terms uh, during that. Uh, but if you don't understand anything I say, then do go online, have a Google and uh, look it up or ask me in the comments below and I'll see if I can get back to you with the right answer and the right definitions for you. Um, so let's take a look at what's going on. Um, I've done this in a slightly different way today. Okay guys, let's take a look at what's been going on with this Thai food. So once again, thank you very much for all of these uh, subscribers that come to the channel and lots of views coming in, even from my uh, live stream, 1.8 thousand views at the moment, which is excellent, thank you so much. So let's start off then with a bit of uh, Windy, which is showing you sort of the present conditions. Um, just down here, this is Manila Bay here that you can see, so winds are still quite light, 16 knots or so from the north. As you can expect, this is going to start moving northwesterly towards Manila Bay. Um, did actually hit landfall a lot further to the south and I think it's dispersed quite a lot since then. It's, it seems to have slowed down even in what seems to be the worst of it. You're only looking around 45, maybe 50 knots. Um, worst forecast I'm really seeing are around the 65 to 70 knot range. Um, it's not too bad at all. I think you can see a little bit of movement as, you, as it moves north and you can see it will be affecting Manila Bay as it passes up. Um, forecast though are looking not too bad like you say here 70 miles an hour something like that and then it's going to head up and continue to disperse obviously TRS's they take all their power from the sea uh, with lots of the uh, warm water being picked up by the power of the wind so as soon as it gets over land it already starts to disperse and slow down and in this case it's quite a small typhoon and doesn't seem to be causing too many issues Let's have a look at what the ships decided to do. So most of them have all left the bay, as you can see. That's the Sapphire Princess, Carnival Splendor, Majestic, 
Golden, the Amsterdam, Sun Princess, Queen Elizabeth. So all the passenger ships seem to have left the, the harbour of, and uh, well, left Manila Bay and have headed out to sea. They're probably just outside 12, um, discharging some grey water and producing some uh, potable water. Uh, whilst they allow the storm to pass through this area and probably will be re-anchoring somewhat at some point later today or this evening um, in order to continue with the operation of trying to get this crew disembarked. So I just wanted to give you a quick update on what's been going on with this typhoon. I know people were asking um, and hopefully this gives you more of an idea of what the ships decided to do and where they've gone off to. As I say, uh, head, heads north, it should be continuing to disperse as it gets up here. I did, when it hit land though, further down to the uh, east south easterly of that, um, of where it currently is, it probably started out as more of a category 3 on the Sapphire Simpson scale, but um, seems to reduce now more or less to a category 1, only just about force uh, 12 on the Beaufort scale, so uh, sort of barely a typhoon at the moment, but uh, definitely started off worse. You can see there's a little bit of footage here of how it was when it hit land. Certainly not good at all. Um, not something I would want to experience myself, especially if I'm at anchor on a cruise ship. So it seems like everybody made the right decision. They moved out of the harbour to get well clear in this safe area. The weather out here looks much better. Uh, if we can go back to the current weather conditions, as you can see, it's not too bad at all. 15 knots. So quite light. Uh, so well safe, well clear from this typhoon for now. Um, cruise ships will be staying out there and then heading back in, I guess, to anchor back in the bay once this passes through. So as you can see, in the end, Typhoon Ambo, which is as it's known uh, over in the Philippines, and it's much easier for me to pronounce, uh, Typhoon Ambo did not have too much of an effect on the ships that were there. Obviously they did as a precaution move away from the harbour, but the wind speeds never got up to a too critical level. Uh, not to say that it wasn't still a, a terrible thing, Mother Nature is quite severe and when that initially did make landfall you were hitting wind speeds of around 115 miles per hour so certainly there was some destruction in the Philippines which is a terrible thing to be happening especially with all that's already going on over there uh, like in all countries around the world the government are very busy um, with this COVID-19 response so to then add, have to add that extra factor in isn't very nice at all uh, but I just wanted to let you know something about how the cruise ships were thinking um, and why they would have gone where they went and where they did go and what action they took. Obviously, as I said in the live stream before, and I'll put a link in this one for you so you can go back to it and review that if you like, uh, the captain will be making the decision uh, which is safest for the ship and they'll take early action. We've got to reduce any kind of risk um, to the ship and to the safety and well-being of those on board. So they will have made the decision to leave probably quite early and be now. And it also it worked well for a service call essentially to outside 12, outside the environmental limits, where you are able to discharge grey water and um, it would help for production of our potable water, which they used for consumption on board. So it, in the end, it would have worked well both ways. Obviously, all ships leaving at the same time would have been a bit tricky. And now you can start to see that these ships are starting to head back in, back to anchor, and so they can continue with the repatriation process of their Filipino crew. So thanks for checking in guys, I hope you did enjoy this one and learned something and maybe um, got an update on the information, I've had quite a few questions about this one. So I just wanted to bring you a quick quick video about it and uh, letting you know what had been going on in the last 24 hours or so. I do apologise for the delay of getting this uploaded, as you know my ship's internet is not fantastic so it will take a little bit of time. So even though the information that's coming to you might be a little bit old, hopefully it's still uh, relevant and you learned something from it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for staying with me right through to the end there guys, uh, enjoy this beautiful sunset at sea. If you did enjoy the video and you haven't already, please subscribe, hit that little bell to get a notification every time I upload something. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thank you very much for your support and take care.